Hi, everybody. Hi. How's it going? So we want to do um, a lot of questions, because I assume you all have a lot of questions. So I'm going to start. We're going to have a conversation. We'll have a conversation. Um, and then ask the first question. Yes, I will. I shall <laughs> ask the first question. But just so you know, two things. Um, I left my phone in uh, the car uh, on the way here this morning. I came in from DC, and I haven't been without a cell phone since 1996 or so. So I'm a little bit jumpy. Um, it's, the, it's the best relationship I've ever had, obviously. So it's hard being away from her. Um, anyway, so, so. So, you know, before we start, it, it is difficult to be on the other side because we've been interviewers for right, such a exactly. long time, and they say, well, it's going to be a great conversation. Well, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, yeah, fine. <laughs> uh, someone, I'm so sorry in advance. Um, all right, so uh, let's talk a little bit about Trump then. Let's start there. Uh -huh. um, so it's been... My friend. Not, your, your close friend, Donald Trump. Um, let's talk about that incident and what the repercussions were, because I want to talk about, there's a lot of things. We could go to Cuba and Bernie Sanders. We could talk about disinformation. We could talk about Russia uh, and disinformation, but let's start with that, which really sort of was a great moment, not a good moment, but a big mm. moment in the relationship between uh, the press and the government and politics and social media, everything around it. Can you talk a little bit about the repercussions? I, I think that, that we, and when, when I say we uh, Latinos, we saw something and we sent something that many people didn't want to see. When he said, um, after going down the stairs and, and announcing that he wanted to be president, when he said, that Mexican immigrants were criminals and rapists. He was talking about me. I'm a Mexican immigrant. And so I did what you would have done. Mm -hmm. I, I sent him a, a letter to mm -hmm. his office in, in New York, mm -hmm. uh, FedEx, and he got it. And instead of just responding, no, I don't want to do an interview with you, I told him that I wanted to talk to him. Mm -hmm. I had many questions. So instead of doing that, he published the letter on, on Instagram and with my phone number on it. So I had to change my phone, obviously. That number, I clearly didn't like it. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, well, now it's my turn. So I was looking for the right moment to confront Donald Trump, mm -hmm. just to tell him what you said about Mexican immigrants was racist, it was wrong, and as a journalist, I have the right to ask you a question. So how many people, how many of you have gone to Dubuque, Iowa? Yeah, that, that, that's what, yeah, just a few. Well, so, we found that he was going to give a press conference in Dubuque, Iowa, not in New York, because it would have been with uh, thousands of journalists. And then in Dubuque, um, I was sitting on the front row. And then, as, as you would have done in any press mm -hmm. conference, I saw a moment of silence, less than a second. I stood up, and I said, I have a question. I have a question about immigration. And he just didn't want to, he just didn't want to answer. He told me, go back to Univision. Basically, he was saying, uh, go back to Mexico. That's mm -hmm. exactly what he meant. Another racist comment. And instead of answering the question, his bodyguard took me out of that press conference. The only other person that has done something similar, it was Fidel Castro with his bodyguards. Mm -hmm. so, so that's what happened. What, there was immediate repercussions, speaking of using Instagram and social media, across social media when this happened. Mm -hmm. What was the result from your point of view? What do you think it, it did for good and not so good? As, as we were saying, everything is public now. Mm -hmm. and, and with social media, now we just didn't, didn't have to wait for the newscast mm -hmm. at 6.30 to find out exactly what was happening. Um, he, he was a master, and he's still a master of, of using social media for his own purposes. Mm -hmm. and, but on the other hand, I think there's a lot of resistance to that. So uh, the fact that he published my my phone number on, on Instagram, mm -hmm. and that everybody knows that number, everybody knew that number, and I got all kinds of messages from, from people uh, telling me um, that we were doing exactly what, what we needed to do, to mm -hmm. people asking for, for a job and even sending some songs to me. Okay, all right. <laughs> There's a plus side to everything, it I was, guess. Yeah, it, so not everything was negative. Yeah, so being trolled by Donald Trump has its advantages, I guess. Um, all right, so um, when, when, but when that happened, the relationship, it sort of began something that happened over and over again. And it's all swirling around in a more system, systemic mm -hmm. way around disinformation, around telling lies, around uh, uh, saying them in public, sort of telling lies in public and continuing them. Um, that continues to today. When I was leaving the hotel room today, uh, there was a, a, a headline on CNN that said, um, 
Donald Trump won't talk, won't say if he thinks Russia has been involved in these elections. Mm -hmm. Just won't say it, or won't say it. And, and on the weekend, the National Security Advisor uh, was saying he had never seen analysis about the Russians being involved, which is a lie because there is. Well, he may not have seen it. That may be. He may be partially telling the truth. He, he, he lies a lot, and, and we saw something that that people just didn't want to pay attention to. We were saying we know what's happening. On that day in, in Dubuque, Iowa, mm -hmm. um, he just made another racist statement. He attacked the, um, the press in ways in which I never expected, and he kept on lying. Uh, he, he said, for instance, that, I had, that he didn't know who I was then. If he didn't know who I was, how come he said, go back to Univision? Mm -hmm. So the fact that he was lying, and he has lied more than 2,000 times, according to the Washington Post, right? 15,000, but go ahead. Okay. Who's counting? <laughs> All right. Um, and the fact that he was attacking the press right there, and the fact that he was making racist statements. And then many journalists uh, and many people in the United States didn't want to see that. They, they would say, oh, Jorge, come on, you're, you're a Latino, maybe you're too sensitive, you don't know exactly who, who he is, he's not going to be here for long. And we were right. We were absolutely right so what, from the beginning. So how has that affected your job? I want to get beyond Trump because everyone sure. always just talks about what, what is it, because it's been copied by a lot of people and a lot of people are using social media to bypass reporters and mm -hmm. journalists and to tell their stories on their own. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But what, how does it affect your job? Because you had a point of view, you know, early yeah. on. Everyone's like, uh, he shouldn't have a point of view. I heard that from some people. Now, just the other day, we had Anderson Cooper calling bullshit on a governor who was, yeah. uh, and he used that exact word on the air. Mm -hmm. Talk about the idea of point of view and storytelling today. As, as a journalist, I think we have two, two responsibilities, two very important responsibilities. The first one is to report reality as it is, not as we wish it would be. So if it's red, I have to say red, and then if 15 people died, we have to say 15. That's the most important responsibility. And I'm, I'm sure that people from Africa, Europe, and Asia, and, and Latin America can cover a hurricane more or less the same way, and even a war more or less the same way. But, but then the other important responsibility, probably the most important responsibility that we have, is to question those who are in power. Mm -hmm. And if we don't ask the top questions to those who are in power, nobody will. And then I think that we have to take a stand on six, on six different circumstances. When it comes to racism, discrimination, corruption, public lies, violation of human rights and dictatorships, we have to take a stand, Cara. And if we don't do that, then who's going to do it? That's, that's uh, engineers built incredible structures, architects built beautiful homes, uh, doctors saves lives, and we ask questions. And if we don't do that, who's going to do it? So what does that affect, um, you know, it's something you, I, you, you, I, I do You've done the same the way. You I do, do that all the time. time. And our, our relationship with power has to be confrontational sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a beautiful word in Spanish, um, contra poder. Mm -hmm. And contra poder means um, to be on the other side of power. It doesn't matter who is in power. Mm -hmm. and, and people might say, well, Jorge, you are against Donald Trump. Well, just ask what happened with Barack Obama mm -hmm. before he left office. I confronted him and told him that he had deported more than three million people, more, more immigrants than any other president in the history of the United States. We're talking about removals. And he just didn't like it. And I, I haven't been able to talk to him again. Mm -hmm. So uh, same, I had the same experience with him. Um, I was talking about encryption, actually. And what happened? He didn't like it. He didn't. Have you talked to him again? Um, oddly enough, I, I, I'm going to tell a very short story. My ex-wife worked uh, at, for Barack uh, Obama in the yeah. White House, and at the end of your term, you're supposed to go in and take pictures with the family, and you, you stand in a line. It's very strange. Mm -hmm. And I, she made me go because the kids were there. And I walked into the Oval Office, and I was like, I really don't want to do this. And he looked at me and said, how did you get in here? Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Was he kidding or not? I don't know. No, no. <laughs> I, there, there was no Secret Service action, yeah. so I feel uh -huh. like it was a joke, but I, I could not tell because I asked him a tough question about encryption and um, how he changed his point of view. But, it, it, but when you talk about that, do you think that, because that reporters had always tried to be, uh, and I hate to use this term, fair and balanced. They tried yeah. to have that. I never thought that was the correct way to do it because I think you can do reported analysis of, of things. Like you do enough reporting and then you can have a point of view and call something out. And in, in certain occasions, you have to have a point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, once I had the opportunity, I wouldn't say it was an interview, with, with Fidel Castro. 
uh, he was in Guadalajara, he was going from one uh, room to another in, in a hotel, and I, I stopped and I asked him some questions, and at the end, his bodyguard pushed me aside, and I couldn't continue the, the conversation. But here's, here's the, the way I see it. Should I interview Fidel Castro, or should I interview Nicolás Maduro, the dictator of Venezuela, the same way that I interview uh, a victim of their dictatorships? No, I think it's completely different. The approach that I have with someone who is in power is different than my approach with those who don't have power. And I don't know if you see it exactly the same way. I mean, mm -hmm. when you talk with all the, uh, these leaders in Silicon Valley, how do you do it? Well, there's no downside to insulting a billionaire, I've found in my <laughs> career. Um, there really isn't. You look good, they never do. And then especially when it's Facebook, it doesn't really matter. You, it's, you win every time. Um, I'm and, like and the they, house. And, I'm like the house in Vegas. And you have to ask the questions. They are expecting yes. the, just because they have power yes. that you have to be soft, and that's not the way it should be. I think well, it has to be exactly the it's opposite. In, it's interesting. In politics, you get a lot more pushback, and you got some really ugly pushback from Donald Trump. I get sort of these sad-eyed looks, like, how can you insult me? I'm a victim here. Um, I've made my billions, honestly, and you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't question the damage. And I'm, help, I'm helping humanity. Right, I'm uh, helping humanity. So it's invention. a little different because you get a sort of a sad-eyed look from a man, a, a young white man in a T-shirt and uh, a hoodie, I, which who I have no sympathy for. But um, it's a different experience. Um, in any but case, still, still. yes, yes, you have to ask them the question. So 